Did you know that the prostaglandin analog class of glaucoma medications like lantanoprost enhance the outflow through the uveoscleral pathway? Well, this same pathway is utilized in superciliary shunts to lower IOP in glaucoma surgery. And that's what we're about to get into today. Welcome to MIGS Made Clear, where we break down microinvasive glaucoma surgery into bite-sized chunks to help you gain clarity and confidence in MIGS techniques. Today, we're diving into superciliary shunts, their history, current use, and future potential. By the way, my name is Dr. Constance Okeke, and I'm an Ivy League, Wilmer Eye, and Baskin Palmer trained glaucoma specialist and cataract surgeon. I'm excited to guide you through another segment of MIGS Made Clear. This six-part educational series is supported by an understanding restricted educational grant from New World Medical, Nova Eye Medical, and Sight Sciences. In this video, we'll discuss the background of superciliary shunts, their mechanism of action, and an overview of the available devices. Stay tuned to the end to find out what we'll be discussing in our next video. Let's make MIGS clear one innovative technique at a time. When Cypest Micro Stent first became available, it was an exciting addition to our MIGS toolkit, offering a completely new pathway for aqueous outflow into the superciliary space. Early results were promising and many patients had excellent outcomes. However, as time went on, concerns about corneal endothelial cell loss led to its withdrawal from the market. Despite this, understanding Cypass and other superciliary shunts remain crucial for recognizing and managing patients who still have these devices implanted in their eye. Additionally, new advancements are emerging, including biointerventional techniques that reinforce filtration in the superciliary space without the need for a permanent an implant, and we'll be discussing that today. So let's dive in. Lesson one, background and targeted anatomy. The superciliary space, which is located between the sclera and the ciliary body, offers a natural outflow pathway for aqueous humor through the uveoscleral root. The previous MIGS techniques that we have discussed in this series have primarily focused on trabecular and subconjunctival pathways, but superciliary drainage provides an alternative method of lowering IOP with minimal disruption to ocular structure. Structures. In regards to the targeted anatomy, devices implanted in the superciliary space facilitate aqueous drainage by creating a controlled cyclodialysis, where the ciliary muscle is separated from the scleral spur. This enhances uveoscleral outflow and decreases IOP by creating a connection between the anterior chamber and the supracortal space. The procedure can be performed ab interno, with entry being made right under the anatomical scleral spur and above the ciliary body band. This approach minimizes conjunctival trauma and preserves the conjunctiva for future surgical options. The ciliary body's proximity to the sclera makes it an effective but delicate target for intervention. Lesson 2. Mechanism of Action Superciliary shunts lower IOP by increasing the flow of aqueous humor into the superciliary space, utilizing the natural uveoscleral drainage pathway. By creating a separation between the ciliary body and the sclera, these devices promote sustained IOP reduction with fewer complications than traditional trabeculectomy or tube shunts. Lesson 3. MIGS devices in this class and how they work. As mentioned earlier, the Cypass microstent is no longer available. The Cypass microstent was a polyamide tube with a 0.5 millimeter outer diameter that featured multiple fenestrations along its length to facilitate aqueous outflow. Implanted ab interno with gonioscopic guidance, it created a controlled separation between the sclera and the ciliary body to enhance uveoscleral drainage. On gonioscopy, the cypass appears as a long, thin tube embedded in the angle, often visible between the iris and the scleral spur. Key considerations include monitoring for the extension of the device tip into the anterior chamber, as well as corneal changes such as edema or decimate folds. If endothelial cell loss is noted, surgical trimming of the device may be necessary. Now, let's discuss the cyclopen with Alloflow, which creates a biointerventional cyclodialysis with allograft scleral reinforcement. The cyclopen microinterventional cyclodialysis system is a manual surgical instrument used to create or modify a cyclodialysis cleft and precisely deliver biotissue reinforcement. It is specifically designed to maintain patency of the cleft and enhance uveoscleral outflow. Alloflow is a minimally manipulated acellular homologous scleral allograft designed for structural reinforcement. The bio scaffold is highly porous, 
impermeable, non-resorbable, and provides long-term support for the filtration pathway. These properties of the tissue are believed to reduce the risk of endothelial touch. The Aliflow BioTissue comes as a 5mm by 0.5mm by 0.5mm piece that is inserted in the single-use Aliflow carrier. The carrier is then attached to the cyclopen and then used to create a controlled cyclodialysis. The actuation slider is smoothly retracted to engage delivery of the Aliflow tissue. The combination of cyclopen with aliflow provides a biodegenerative solution for maintaining supraciliary outflow. The CPT codes used are 66740 for cyclodialysis creation and 67255 for scleral reinforcement with graft. Now let's go through the surgical approach. The space is expanded with viscoelastic to ensure controlled separation of tissues. A cyclodialysis cleft is created ab interno using the cyclopen device for about one to three clock hours. The aliflow scaffold is deployed into the cleft to reinforce the filtration channel. Gonioscopic guidance ensures proper positioning without interference in the anterior chamber. Lesson 4 Indications and Contraindications The cyclopen with aliflow is a versatile procedure in that it can be performed on eyes that have had previous surgeries such as prior failed trabecular or subconjunctival MIGs, trabeculectomy, or tube shunt. It is ideal in patients with open angle glaucoma requiring an alternative outflow pathway. It can be done standalone or in conjunction with cataract surgery. The device is contraindicated when there is poor visualization of the iridocorneal angle and with active ocular inflammation or severe conjunctival scarring. So in summary, today we explored the role of superciliary shunts in glaucoma management from the discontinued sidepass microstent to emerging biointerventional approaches such as cyclopen with aliflow. While superciliary drainage remains a promising mixed pathway, ongoing innovation will determine the future of this technique. Understanding these devices is crucial, especially for patients who still have the sidepass implanted. Before before we close, here's what I'd like you to do. Subscribe to the Eye Glaucoma YouTube channel for more videos in this series. Share this video with colleagues who are passionate about glaucoma care. Explore the resources below for a deeper dive into these technologies and a sneak peek at what's next in the series. And don't forget to grab your copy of the Glaucoma Guidebook for practical insights into glaucoma management, which is perfect for your glaucoma patients. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that this breakdown clarified the advantages and applications of supraciliary shunt techniques and also boosted your confidence in selecting the right tools for your patients. And if you want to further enhance your learning, submit questions in the comments about the series. If there are enough questions, we'll do a follow-up MIGS Made Clear Frequently Asked Questions segment. If not, we will be concluding this sixth part of the MIGS Made Clear video series. I hope you have enjoyed it and gained more MIGS confidence. This video was brought to you by the AGE Initiative and iGlaucoma.